Hello, everyone. Happy holidays. Today, I have for you three beautiful, easy to make Christmas ornaments. Two are made with a nylon cord, and the other with wood beads. If you're in need of filling spaces on your Christmas tree, these ornaments would do that beautifully. Welcome to all to my channel today, and I hope you will subscribe if you are not currently a subscriber and give this video a thumbs up if you like these ornaments. Okay, let me show you how I made these beautiful ornaments. I'm going to be showing you the items that you'll need today, and I apologize for the vertical format, but this will uh, be over quickly and the proper format will resume. I have here some nylon cord, which I had purchased at Hobby Lobby at some point in time. I also have here that jute covered wire that you could purchase at any Dollar Tree. I have some wood beads. Again, you could purchase these at Dollar Tree or anywhere like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Amazon, very easy to find wood beads. I have here also a little bit of Christmas greenery that we're going to use to embellish uh, each of the three wreaths. I chose two different types of greenery. I have there a frosted boxwood and some other frosted greenery. They'll just be small pieces of greenery because these ornaments are only around seven inches in circumference. I have there some baby pine cones, little tiny ones. And an assortment of ribbons. I have two buffalo checks. They're both wired. I'm going to be creating bows for each of the three ornaments. I have there some baker's twine. I'm just showing you different options for ribbons that you could use for these pieces. For the third um, little mini wreath, I used a red and white striped beautiful ribbon. Just showing you options there. Otherwise, you will need just the regular crafting tools, a ruler, some scissors, craft wire, and a uh, wire cutters and a hot glue gun. And now we're back to regular format. We're going to start off with the uh, the ornament that has the twisted uh, cord. You're going to need to cut two pieces at 24 inches and cut four pieces at 60 inches. This is a simple half knot macrame knot. This is very, very easy to do. The two short pieces that you cut go right down the center and they are going to remain in the center and we're not going to be using them. They are just going to be the cords that you tie around your half knots. Now, firstly, you're going to take the cord on the right side, cross it over the center cord, and then you're going to take the cord on the left and lay it across that cord that you just crossed over and you're simply tying a knot around the center cords. I take those center cords and I place them toward the edge of the table and I just press my body up against them and that way I keep them separate and I keep them sturdy and, and centered right down the center. Always keep track of your short cords. You never use those to tie knots with. Okay, so on the right side, let's do it again. Create a, a loop, rest it on the two center cords that are stable there. Take the two cords, the two long cords on the left, cross it over the cord that you just made the loop with, bring it underneath, feed it through the loop, and tie your knot. I'm gonna show you how to do this several times. Keep those cords, those short cords, right down the middle in the center. Create the loop, lay it over the center cord. Take your left long cords, cross it over that piece, feed it underneath, 
right through the loop and tie your knot. Notice how I always pull down my center cords in between each set of loops. Cross your loop over, rest it on the center cords, take your left one, lay it over that, feed it underneath the center cords and up through the loop. As you can see there, you're just tying knots around those two center cords. Now, as you go, this is going to twist, which is exactly what you want it to do. Create your loop, lay it over the center cords, take your left cords, feed it underneath and up through the loop. Create your loop, feed it underneath. This gets very easy once you get into the rhythm. Create your loop. Feed the left cords underneath the center cords and up through the loop. Create a loop on the right side. Cross it over and under, up through the loop, and tie your knot. See how it's starting? It's starting to twist. That's what you want it to do. Keep track of your center cords. You never use those to tie the knots. Fold over. Create your loop, cross that over, feed it underneath, pull it up through the loop, and tie your knot. Create your loop, bring it underneath, and up through the loop. Create your loop, bring it underneath, and up through the loop. Loop, fold it under. And see how it's twisting? Keep track of your center cords and just keep following that same pattern. This is a standard half knot, macrame knot. Super easy to do once you get into the rhythm. Now that we're going to create uh, these twisted knots for 14 inches. And that's how we're going to create the wreath. See how I keep track of those center cords. And here we have 14 inches of those half knots. I use a little piece of tape to hold the top of my cords so that it doesn't move around when I'm creating my half knots. And for those ends there, I just want to use a little bit of hot glue to keep them from fraying. And I'm also going to create a little tab of sorts to glue one end to the other end. Kind of a fold over kind of a tab. And this will be at the top of the wreath ornament. Now, if you had trouble following, if you've never done half knot macrame knots before, just um, watch it again. I think that once you um, see a few of those knots done, you'll be able to follow. Super easy. This is one of the easiest macrame knots there is, and it just creates a real pretty twisted uh, knot configuration. So I think it's real pretty for an ornament. Now I'm doing the other end there, taking some hot glue. And normally I use finger protectors, but crafting out of my normal element today uh, when I did these uh, projects. So I just made the best of it, made sure that I didn't burn the heck out of myself, <laughs> which I'm known to do, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to take, as I mentioned, a, like kind of like a tab over a tab, just placing that right on top of one another, those end pieces, just to close up that wreath. This is going to be around seven inches um, in diameter, the finished uh, product, so to speak. And I just take some hot glue 
and adhere all that. Now, don't worry if it doesn't look perfect. It's going to be completely covered up by the bow and the greenery. Now, once we get that all closed up, we can um, decorate that, that little wreath, which is so pretty. It's going to be so pretty on a tree. And there you have it. For this next ornament, it is a simple braid, just like you braid hair. I cut six pieces at 48 inches. I'm just going to line them up, put another piece of tape on there. You could use painter's tape or masking tape. I didn't happen to have either available to me. Like I said, I'm not uh, crafting in my, my usual um, place today, so I'm making do with what I have. That's what you do in crafting, right? All right, so I'm going to divide those um, strands oops, in sections, two per section. And again, I just cut 48 inches. I cut them 48 inches in length. So you're just going to do this just exactly the way you braid hair. And this creates a really pretty looking little um, ornament wreath. Very quick and easy to make as well. Okay, so this piece as well is going to um, be around 14 inches long and it's going to be around 7 inches in circumference, the finished uh, wreath ornament. I'm going to do just exactly what we did with the previous ornament. We're just going to form it into a circle or a wreath shape and connect the ends exactly the same way. I did have a little bit of cord left over, probably 48 inches was a little bit long, but I would always rather to have uh, excess cord than not have enough. That is infuriating. <laughs> so I always cut a little bit extra, I'm sure you probably could have gotten by with maybe 42 inches. So I'm going to close up those ends with my hot glue, just the way I did the previous one, creating like little tabs so that I can lay those ends on top of one another and create a closure. Oops, sorry. Create a closure for my wreath. Now, the twisted cord created a little bit more of a sturdy piece than the braid, so I decided to do a little something extra to this braided um, ornament, and you'll see that in just a minute. Another quick, real quick and easy step, just to create a little stability, which I did on the back of the ornament. And again, probably recommended to be using a finger protector here or maybe a, a spatula. And I'm showing you there, same thing to the other end. Now I'm going to uh, 
take my glue gun and close up that ornament. This creates a really pretty texture uh, for this wreath ornament. I'm going to cut off the excess cords there. And I'll show you here in just a second what I ended up doing to create a little stability to the back of the ornament. Here I'm just getting all of my cords all adhered and finished off. Again, don't worry too much about this closure. Um, there's going to be a ribbon and greenery and pine cones on top of that that area there. But for the back of the ornament, I decided I would take a pipe cleaner and wrap the pipe cleaner this, with the same nylon cord that I created the wreath with. I'm going to show you this here in a second. This was a very quick and easy fix just to create a little bit of stability for the back of the ornament so that it kept its circular shape when it was hanging up. And there you have the braided ornament. Now I have there the pipe cleaner. See that one, the twisted cord was a little more sturdy um, because of the way that it's constructed. But this one will become sturdy as well. Just take a pipe cleaner and a piece of that nylon cord that you use to create the braid. And I just put a little dab of glue on the end of that pipe cleaner and I just twisted that cord all the way around that pipe cleaner. It just took a couple of minutes. It was quick and easy fix. So I completely covered the pipe cleaner with that cord so that from the back side, it would, um, it would coordinate with the, the cord that I made the wreath with. And once I have that all covered, I'm just going to glue it around the center of that braided ornament and this will create a stability. There's my piece all finished and wrapped. I just place a little bit of glue, hot glue there. I'm just going to go around that wreath and just create a little more stability to the piece so it will hold its shape using a little dot of hot glue as I go. And this worked beautifully. It was just that little bit of extra stability to help that uh, ornament keep its shape. These ornaments are really, really pretty on a traditional tree or a boho themed tree. Very beautiful for that. Or a rustic tree. And now you can see it has a nice circular shape and that pipe cleaner did the trick. Super easy fix. Okay, so we have two of our ornament bases done. Now it's time for the third. This is so easy. I took this uh, wired, um, this jute covered wire that I got at Dollar Tree. I put a little dab of glue on the end because this uh, loves to fray very, very easily. So uh, I put a little dab of glue there and I just kind of screwdriver my beads on to the wire, the jute covered wire. Again, this is around the same size, around 14 inches long and when you create 
the ornament circle. It's around seven inches long. All three of the these ornaments are similar in size. And I just fill up that piece of wire that I cut in around the 14 inches that I just mentioned. And I just fill that up with beads. And I just continue to place those beads on there till I get all the way to the end. And then I'm just going to take the wire and feed it into the hole of the first bead and secure that with a little bit of glue. So I have a closure for my little wood bead wreath. It's actually easy to do. It looks like I'm making a, a huge project of this, but, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the littlest things can give you a hard time. But truthfully, the wire does go into that bead. Okay, so I put a little dab of glue to close that up, and now I have all three of my ornament bases all finished. Now, the fun part, it's time to decorate. So I'm going to start off with my little wood bead ornament. And I'm going to use a buffalo check. This is a wired buffalo check. And I'm going to create a little bow. And I'm going to show you how I do that. I left a little bit of a tail there. Probably, I want to say, around five inches. And you'll see how I use the tails on the ornament to decorate the ornament when we get to that in just a bit. I have just pinch the uh, where I want my tail to, to start. And now I am going to start creating the loops of my bow. So I fold my loops over. I want to say they're about mm, three and a half to four inches in length. I squeeze my bow in the center, securing it with my thumb and my index finger. Now I'm going to fold it over, pinch, catch it with my thumb, make the loops symmetrical. So that loop on the other side is exactly the same. I'm going to make a four loop bow. Now I'm going to twist my ribbon. So the best side is facing me, create my loop pinch it in the middle, making sure I have everything symmetrical. Now I need to create my second loop on the other side. So I twist my ribbon, fold it over, catch it with my thumb and my index finger. If I need to adjust the size of my loops, that's what I'm doing right there. You can pull it forward or back it up, keeping my nice tight pinch right down the center. This is super easy to do. This is the method I use to create all of my bows, big or small. I'm going to use a piece of craft wire as opposed to a pipe cleaner. On my little bows, I just use craft wire because I think pipe cleaners are too bulky. So in the back, I'm just going to give it a couple of twists to secure those four loops. Now I want one loop right down the center of my bow to finish it off. So I am going to take my ribbon and create a loop. Now I'm just going to fold it under, tuck it under, catch it with my thumb there. I'm going to show you that again. Fold it over, tuck it under, catch it with my thumb and secure it with my thumb there. Now I have my center loop. Now to secure that, I just take the wire from the back, stick it through the hole or stick it through the center loop. I often call this a button and catch it on the other side, bring it around the back and twist it. 
Now I have one tail on the bottom and one on the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and cut that off by placing them up against one another. Now I'm going to take that tail on the top. I'm showing you there. Feed it right through the center loop. Pull it through on the other side. Now I've just married up my tails. Now you have a cute little four loop bow with a center loop or a button going right down the center. And it's that easy to create little bows like I do. Now I'm going to begin to decorate this bead ornament. And I have this beautiful little frosted greenery that I picked up at Michael's. It's just beautiful. And I'm going to place that with hot glue at the top. Now I want to conceal the areas where our um, closure is on the wreath ornament. I'm going to leave a little bit of space between the greenery and that's where I'm going to place my bow. Now I'm going to cut off the uh, wire from the back or maybe I wired it on. You can either glue it or wired it. It looks like I wired it because it was so easy to do tucking it into the grooves between the beads. That's why I did that. I think the other um, ornaments, I did glue it down. You could do it either or, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think I just wired it because it was just so easy to do, to tuck it right between those two beads at the closure. And just snip off the excess. And now I have a very cute little buffalo uh, check ribbon at the top of my ornament. Now I left my teals a little bit long because you'll see why here in a bit, but I wanna kind of dress up my ornament with those tails. So now I have my greenery on and my bow. Now I'm gonna take my little pine cones. I purchased these at Hobby Lobby in a bag. I absolutely love these little tiny pine cones. I'm going to put one right underneath the bow. I tilt it a little bit sideways, not pointing straight down, but just kind of angled. A little bit of hot glue will hold that very well. I'm also going to place a pine cone on each side of the bows, or each side of the loops of my bow. I have three pine cones there. Just going to tuck it up underneath there on each side. Now these uh, wired ribbon bows um, are very good at holding their shape, but just going to um, advise you after Christmas when you go to put these ornaments away just put these on the top of the stack in your storage box just so they don't get squashed you can always somewhat repair a squashed wired ribbon bow but why not just um, take the precautions to store them properly So I'm going to angle the tails of my bow. Now you do you, if you prefer to dovetail, do so. Um, but I like my tails angled. I like to ripple my ribbon. You see me doing that there. I'm giving it a little bit of uh, depth. I just ripple my tails a bit. And I could secure those right to the beads just so that that bow keeps its shape and just stays exactly the way I want it to. I'm going to create a tail, I mean, I'm sorry, a hanger for my ornament. 
I just create a tear a teardrop shape. I can't speak this morning. <laughs> I'm just having a little trouble with talking. Oh my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> back to the ornament. Um, just fold it over onto itself. And I, because this ornament is with this beaded ornament, it really makes everything easy because you could tuck everything in between the beads. So I secured one end of my little teardrop shaped hanger, glued it and be stuck it right down in between the two beads there right at the top. And I took the other end and did the same thing. Popped a little glue in there to hold that. And now you have a pretty buffalo check hanger to go with the bow. This looks very pretty to use the same ribbon as the bow. And I just cut off the excess ribbon. And this uh, little wreath ornament is that easy to make. It would be pretty to make several of these and place them around your tree. So easy to do. I do a little last minute shaping of the bow and look how pretty. So simple, so easy, just beautiful. Okay, on to the, um, this twisted uh, half knot wreath ornament that we made out of the nylon cord. I wanted to use a little gingham check uh, ribbon for the hanger just to change it up a little bit. And I used the little buffalo check one for the bow. I'm going to do another bow, but I'm gonna do it a little bit faster, creating my uh, loops, folding it over, pinching it in the middle. See how easy this is to do. I do have bow tutorials. If you would like to um, see how I make this bow as well as a number of other types of bows, I explain it very slowly and methodically and you can learn how to make bows like I do if you would like. So I have little this little bow, two loops on each side or four loops all together. I'm creating my center loop there, fold it over, tuck it under, catch it with my thumb, feed the wire through, twist it in the back, shape my loops a little bit. And now I'm going to marry that tail up with the one on the bottom just to measure it out and cut it off. I take that tail on the top, stick it through my center loop, which I often call the button, pull it down. And how I have this really cute little miniature buffalo check to place on my wreath ornament. Now you're going to place that on there at the area of the closure where we glued that uh, cord together at the top. Now I have here a little frosted boxwood. And I'm just gonna be gluing that right to the surface of my little wreath ornament. It's a little stubborn getting that to stick because of the uh, material that this is made of. The, the boxwood's a little bit, little bit trickier than some of the other greenery. But this is a, a very pretty look on this ornament, this frosted boxwood. I believe I picked it up at Hobby Lobby, which is where I pick up most of my greenery, with the exception of the other greenery, which you're gonna see me use, that I picked up at Michael's. They have some really beautiful Christmas greenery. So I, uh, <laughs> I ended up peeling it off and starting over because I was having a little trouble with it. But um, 
be sure to leave a little space in between your greenery to place your uh, bow, which is another reason why I took the uh, little boxwood off. Um, go ahead and fold over your um, whatever kind of ribbon that you're gonna use for your hanger. Again, I just shape it like a teardrop, fold it over on itself and glue it together. Again, be sure that you apply your bow and your hanger at the area of the wreath closure. This conceals uh, any of the, the area where you glued it together. And I loved mixing the two ribbons, the two different checks. I think that looks very pretty. This is beautiful on also a farmhouse. I think I neglected to mention that. Uh, farmhouse uh, decor or a farmhouse uh, decor tree. This is beautiful on, um, on that. Okay, so I go ahead and I place my bow, glue it down, and this will adhere very nicely to that nylon cord. And again, I have my long tails. I'm going to do something similar that I did on the previous ornament. I like to have my tails trailing down my um, ornament wreaths. Now I'm going to again <laughs> take my boxwood. And that ribbon is going to help to hold that secure there a little bit more. Or that the ribbon on the bow. And I'm going to place it on each side of my bow. On this uh, ornament, I'm going to actually use two kinds of greenery. Just for visual interest, it really dresses this piece up beautifully. See how I ripple? my ribbons for my tails. I also angle. Can you do you if you want to dovetail? Feel free. I always shape my bows um, because I want um, to have my greenery conform to the shape of my bow rather than vice versa, if that makes sense. I just, in plain words, I create my greenery and my embellishments around the loops of the bow and however that bow looks best sitting on the ornament. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, making it symmetrical. And again, see how I should make, I always make sure my bow is perfect and then I build all of the rest of my little wreath around the bow loops. I am a bit of a fanatic about bows. If those of you who follow my channel probably know this already. I am just a great believer in a beautiful bow and how it can enhance the beauty of any piece that you do. That's why I strongly advise you to learn to make this particular bow because it's absolutely beautiful. And once you acquire this skill, it's actually very easy to make. All right, so now I'm going to add some of that Christmas greenery that I got at Michael's. It's a very tiny, uh, leaf on the greenery, if you will. It's um, very different than the boxwood, which has bigger leaves. So anytime that you can uh, mix your greenery, it adds a visual interest to your piece. So I'm just taking hot glue, sticking it under the loops, and just creating a beautiful palette of greenery to enhance the beauty of the bow. I'm 
going to do so, um, place another, I think I used four pieces of that greenery on this piece, that smaller greenery. And you do you, however much greenery you like on your piece. This one is especially beautiful because of that half knot um, macrame um, base. It's really very pretty. Okay, so I have some berries there. I left them on this stem. Oh, wait. No, I actually snipped all these off. It was the other one that I did that. Sorry about that. Disregard what I just said. <laughs> okay, so I snipped off the berries because I wanted to apply them one by one and stick them right down in that greenery using hot glue, of course. I'm just going to add these berries to the greenery, and this really adds a beautiful pop of red on this piece. Look how beautiful that looks already. Now you can take those tails, ripple them, and put a dab of glue and adhere it right to that uh, cord. Look how beautiful that is. All right, last but not least, let's decorate the braided cord ornament. So I'm going to take that greenery again. I love that greenery that I got at Michael's. It's frosted, it's very, very pretty. Now I started out using this uh, Baker's Twine cord, but you'll see that I ended up changing my mind, which is a crafter's prerogative, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I ended up changing it and making a teardrop-shaped hanger in the end. But the Baker's Twine is an option. Um, it makes a very pretty cord. Uh, very pretty hanger, I'm sorry. Okay, so I am going to create another bow. Now this ribbon is not wired, but it's very stiff. So I'm still able to achieve the same look. And I make it exactly the same way, folding over my loops, catching it in the middle with my thumb and my index finger, twisting my ribbon before I fold over the loops. I'm gonna do four loops or two loops on each side. I'm going to secure it in the middle with a piece of wire, bring it around the back, twist it to secure those loops. I just created my center loop there by folding it under. Catching it with my thumb in the middle, keeping everything secure. And I just going to cut off the tail there. Now I have one tail on top. I'm just going to feed it right through the through the center loop or the button. Marry up the tails on the bottom. And I have a very cute red and white striped bow. This looks very pretty on this white cord. Just shape up my loops a little bit there. And I snip off the wire. I'm just gonna trim my tail there. Now remember to um, place your greenery and your bow right at the top where you closed your braided wreath. I'm going to glue down my greenery there, leaving a space in the middle. Now for the, uh, if you're going to use Baker's twine for your hanger, just cut a piece at the desired length. You're just going to tie a knot 
in the bottom and then you could just glue that right to the ornament. But again, I you'll see later that I decided that I wanted to create my hanger from that beautiful red and white striped ribbon. But this baker's twine is always a great option for a hanger. So I just glued it right to the center. I ended up cutting it off later, but this does look pretty on there. It was a good option. And there you have it. Now I'm going to snip off that excess wire from the back of my bow. I tried to use wire cutters with um, wire as much as possible, but I do tend to uh, take what's handy, and sometimes that's my scissors, which is not really a good idea because it does dull the blades of your scissors. Okay, so a dab of glue, press down the bow right there at the top, shaping up my loops there a little bit. This one turns out really pretty. I love them all, but this one, I just love the red, the red ribbon, the red and white ribbon. And again, you can manage your tails exactly the same way. I liked shaping my tails, rippling them a bit. I angled the tails, as you can see there, and I just take a little dab of glue and place those ribbon tails where I want them. Now, this is the, um, the berries that I was started to <laughs> refer to previously. I left those berries on the little stem, if you will, and I'm just going to insert just a little bit more greenery on there before I place the berries. So in plain words, instead of snipping off the berries, I just left them on the stem so that they can kind of uh, trail down the greenery and poke up a little bit. And I, so I put a couple uh, pieces of greenery on each side to fill that out a bit. And you can see there, I just rippled my bow a little bit, trying to get it to stand up a bit on the piece. That's a pretty look, by the way. And if you use a dab of glue to adhere your tails, you can permanently have it acquire that look of the, the bowing or the rippling of the ribbon going down the wreath, which looks very pretty. So I'm snipping off that little uh, excess of that baker's twine uh, in there because I'm going to end up not using that as I mentioned before. So I take my uh, stem of little berries there and I'm just gonna poke that right onto the greenery and let that trail down a bit. And of course, I'm gonna do the same on the other side so it's symmetrical. A little bit of hot glue will secure that beautifully. Uh, anywhere you want to add additional berries, that's easy enough to do. I think I did. Whoops. <laughs> better fingers there. Uh, I think I did actually add a couple of berries in the greenery, ultimately. Now there, you can see I'm, I'm deliberating about what I'm gonna do with that hanger. Am I gonna leave it or am I gonna use the ribbon? And there we go. <laughs> I knew, I knew it was coming. I'm gonna create that teardrop 
hanger. And there it is. And I think that was a good decision. Just going to glue that onto the back. Absolutely love these wreath ornaments. They're so easy to make and they add so much beauty to a tree. I also love a bigger ornament and these are around, well, from top to bottom, when you include the bow and all the greenery, you're probably talking around eight inches. And I just love a bigger ornament on a tree. I think it adds such beauty to a Christmas tree. And never mind how much I love a handmade ornament. I love to fill my tree with handmade ornaments. I also love to give them as gifts. They are always so much loved and appreciated. Now I'm going to be using some of these little baby pine cones from that um, spray of pine cones that I got at Hobby Lobby. They're little teeny tiny pine cones. And I thought that would be a really pretty addition to this ornament. And back to the uh, gifting of these ornaments for friends or relatives. Um, I think it's such a beautiful idea because each year that the recipient takes out that ornament, they think of you and how you took the time to make a beautiful ornament for them. And I think that's just such a nice gesture. I do a lot of handmade ornaments for friends and relatives. Beautiful gifts. And I'm just going to add those little pine cones. I believe I used five or six of those on the piece. Just kind of putting them here and there, trailing down the sides of that wreath ornament. Now I did do one little additional thing um, for this piece. After I put on all of the pine cones, I took a couple of little sprigs of that greenery and I laid it across the stem of the berries. Yes, I'm a little bit anal about the appearance of my ornaments and every little aspect of them and all the finishing touches, but I wanted to hide the stem of the berries and I just laid a little bit of greenery across that stem. And it was just a beautiful finishing touch. Look how pretty these are. I hope you feel inspired to make them. And I hope you feel inspired to subscribe and leave me a thumbs up for these beautiful ornaments. I loved sharing them with you. And until next time, you all take care.